Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that. Welcome to the Library of Congress National Book Festival. My name is Kit Ballinger. I'm a youth services librarian and a consultant with Help Your Shelf. We are delighted that you are joining us here today at the Discovery Stage for our program, Read a Book and Try on Your Dreams, with author-illustrator Grace Lynn. We're featuring her many-starred and visually immersive Alice in Wonderland-like ode to the magic of getting lost in a good story, Once Upon a Book. Grace is an award-winning and New York Times best-selling author and illustrator of many books. And if I included all of Grace's accolades, there would not be any time left for her to speak to you. Highlights include her Newbery Honor chapter book, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, the National Book Award finalist, Companion, When the Sea Turned to Silver, and her Caldecott Honor picture book, A Big Moon Cake for Little Star. In 2022, Grace was awarded the American Library Association's Children's Literature Legacy Award for her significant and lasting contribution to literature for children. Grace's next book, Chinese Menu, The History, Myths, and Legends Behind Your Favorite Foods, will be out on September 12th. Thanks to Grace and the myth-busting that she's doing in this book, I learned that a fortune cookie may actually be a mooncake with a case of mistaken identity. I wish I was a mooncake. <laughs> Grace is offering a virtual classroom visit competition with pre-orders, and you can find out more information about that and all of her books on her website. It is rare for a children's book creator to be a jack of so many trades and a master of all of them. Grace will share some thoughts today about the connections between reading and creativity and the power of fantastical stories to help our imaginations take flight. We'll save time towards the end for questions. And following this program, Grace will sign books in line six from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., followed by an appearance in the Story District. Everyone, please help me welcome Grace Lynn. All right, hi everybody. I'm so happy to see all of you here. So hopefully after that you all know who I am. I'm Grace Lynn and I'm very short. So like I'm looking over you like this. So hopefully you can see me. <laughs> I'm Grace Lynn and I am an author and an illustrator. I'm making sure that the slides go. Okay, there we go. We're on that slide. <laughs> so you can see, as I said, I'm an author and an illustrator. And these are a bunch of books that I've authored and illustrated. And when you are an author, it means you write the words to a book. When you are an illustrator, it means you draw the pictures in a book. I write the words and I draw the pictures to most of my books. And that is why, um, if you see, if that's the correct slide, <laughs> you can see that on my books, it's just my name on the cover of the, those books, right? It's just my name because I wrote and illustrated them. I wrote the words, I drew the pictures, I got to do it all. So that's why it's only my name on the cover of that book, of, of these books. However, this book right here, the book that I will be sharing with you today, has two names on the cover. It has my name, and it also has my good friend, did that work? <laughs> it has the name of my good friend, Kate Messner. That is because we wrote this book together. Now, Kate is an author. She is not an illustrator, so she does not draw the pictures of her books. So Kate has written many, many books, and you can see all the books that she has written, right? But you will see that her books often have two names on the cover because she is the author and somebody else does the pictures. Well, for this book, there's two names on the cover because we co-wrote this book together, we wrote the words together, but 
I illustrated it by myself. So that's why this book has two names on the cover. Uh, now, that is, like I said, is very unusual for me. And a lot of people ask me, wow, why, how did this happen? Why did you co-write a book with someone this time? And I have to tell them the whole story. And the whole story starts all the way back in 2019. <laughs> in 2019, uh, when Children's Book Week was celebrating their 100th anniversary, and they asked me to help create an image to celebrate for their 100th anniversary. So they wanted a picture of a girl reading, or actually just, a, just have something, somebody reading in it. It didn't have to be a girl, but I decided I was going to use my daughter. And so I decided to have a picture of a girl reading. So this is the sketch that I did. And then I drew, then I painted the pictures. So hard to. <laughs> so, and then I painted in the image. So that's a little bit of the process. And then this is the final picture. And when I finished this picture for Children's Book Week, I was so excited. I loved this illustration. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love this picture so much. I wish I could do a whole book with, uh, just, on the, just like this, with this illustration, based on this illustration. I wish I could do a whole book like this. But I couldn't think of any ideas. Have you ever had a time where you couldn't think of any ideas that ever happened to any of you? No, yes? OK, good. <laughs> because that's what happened to me this time. I couldn't think of any good ideas to how to make this picture into a book. Now, when that happens, there's a couple of things that I do. Sometimes I take a break. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I just um, put the book aside, the idea aside, and hope that it comes to me. Sometimes I just put bad ideas down. But this time, I did something a little different. This time, I asked for help. Now, authors have a lot of ways to get together. And one way they get together is through the internet. And we have all these author groups. And so I went to one of these author groups and I posted my painting and I said, hi everyone, I just painted this picture and I love it so much. And I really wanna do a book about this, but I don't have any ideas. Do any of you have any ideas? And I said, and I just put it out there on in our, Author, author group chat and hoped somebody would get back to me. So what ideas do you have? Do any of you have an idea when you see this? If you saw, whoops. There you go. Okay, so if you saw that picture, do, what ideas do, would you have? Does anybody have an idea they'd like to share? What idea would you have? Ooh, a girl that gets consumed in a book. That's pretty good. Any other ideas? Oh, go ahead. A butterfly. A butterfly. That's a good idea. Maybe something to do with a butterfly in a book. Any other ideas? Go ahead. Maybe she enjoys her book so much that she feels like she's almost in it. That's nice. Oh, all the way over there. What's your idea? Her idea is having her two puppies marry together, <laughs> which I think is a great idea. <laughs> All right, one more idea. Go ahead. A girl reading. Yes. And her idea was a girl reading. So those are all interesting ideas. And well, like I said, those are, some of them are actually very, very close to the ideas that people started telling me when I posted that picture. But the idea that I really liked was from my author friend, Kate Messner. And she posted back. <laughs> there we go. And she posted back and she said, oh, here's an idea. It was cold and snowing sideways, but May was tired of boots. So she pulled off her woolen socks and put on her most summery dress. She found the warmest, sunshiniest book on the shelf. 
Once upon a time, there was a girl, she read to the wallpaper birds, a girl who wished for lush green forests where even the morning dew was warm. That sounds like our forest, said the bird, reading over her shoulder. Come in. And that's what she wrote. And I said, wow, that's great. I said, well, keep going, and then what? <laughs> and she answered very, very eloquently, don't know. <laughs> Isn't that always the case with picture books? But I'll give it some thought. And she did. In fact, we both gave it some thought, and we worked together, and we worked and worked together, and we created the story for Once Upon a Book. Do you want to hear what the final story sounds like? Yeah. All right, let's hear. This is what the final story sounds like. All right, so this is my book, Once Upon a Book. Hold on, make sure it's the right. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so hopefully, Right now, you'll see there's the girl staring out the window. Does she look happy? No, she doesn't look very happy, does she? And it's snowy and gray outside. And there she is. Look, she has stomped into her room. And look, she's going through her bureau with all her clothes in it. Hmm, let's see what she does next. All right. Alice was tired of heavy sweaters and thick socks and staying inside with nothing to do. I wish I were someplace that wasn't so frozen and gray, she grumbled to her mother. She began to stomp away, but something flapped nearby. It was the pages of a book. Curious, Alice began to read. Once upon a time, there was a girl, Alice read. She went to a place alive with colors where even the morning dew was warm. That sounds like our home, said the birds. Turn the page and come in. Does everybody know how to turn a page? All right, so everybody turn the page. Ready? Turn the page. All right. So she did. So there's Alice. Is she going right into the book? The air felt as if it came from an oven, the book said. The girl and the birds played among the flowers. But then the rains came down. I wish I were someplace that wasn't so steamy and drippy, Alice said. With the book over her head, Alice read, so the girls went to a place of sparkling sands where the sun would dry her. That sounds like our home, said the camels. Turn the page and come in. Everyone turn the page. So she did. The sun blazed down and dried her hair as she rode on a camel through the desert. But then a sandstorm blew in and stung the girl's face. I wish I were someplace that wasn't so dusty and dry. Then, Alice read, so the girl went to a place of clear waters where the, where the sea would refresh her. That sounds like our home, said the fish. Turn the page and come in. Everyone turn the page. All right, hold on. Where are we? All right, I think we're running out of time, so we might have to go fast. So she did. <laughs> the gentle water soothed her as she swam with the fish through the coral reefs. OK, we're going fast now. But the girl got tangled in seaweed, so she, got, she was caught and confused. I wish I were someplace that wasn't so cramped and crowded. Then Alice read, so the girl went to a place of wide open blue where she would be boundless and free. That sounds like our home, said the clouds. Turn the page and come in. Everyone turn the page fast. <laughs> so she did. The clouds billowed like the sail of a ship. The girl rode the wind through the sky. But the clouds darkened and the thunder roared. 
I wish I were someplace that wasn't so booming and loud. So the girl went to a place with no sounds at all, Alice read, where she could be quiet and calm. That sounds like my home, whispered the moon. Turn the page and come in. Everyone turn the page fast. <laughs> so she did. The soundless stars twinkled and winked as she floated in the moon's glowing light. And you'll have to read the rest of the book <laughs> to find out what happens. <laughs> because very quickly, I know we have just a little bit of time left. Um, so I wanted to tell you, did you notice very quickly that there was an animal that was following Alice throughout this book? Did you notice the rabbit? Now, there's a very special reason why there's a rabbit in this book. First of all, did you notice that the girl's name is Alice? That's because Alice, there's a very special Alice in, lit, in children's literature. Her name is Alice in Wonderland. And in that story, she follows a white rabbit to have her adventure. But in my book, a white rabbit follows Alice. And that's because in Asian culture, there's a very famous white rabbit as well. Have you ever looked up at the moon and seen all these dark shadows on the moon? And here in the United States, when we look up at that dark, all those dark shadows, we say that we see see a man's face there. And somebody says, oh, look, there's the old man of the moon. But in Asian countries, they look up at the moon and they see a rabbit. They say all those dark shadows make a rabbit. And so they've made lots of stories about this rabbit. They've called it the jade rabbit. And they say that the jade rabbit has lots of powers. And in Chinese culture, they say that if you see the jade rabbit on the moon festival and you make a wish, at the, wish the jade rabbit can bring that wish wish to the moon lady and make your wish come true. So what I'd like to do now very quickly, because we're running out of room, not room, we're running out of time, is I'd like to draw you all your own a jade rabbit so we can all have a wish, okay? Now, some of you might want to draw these with me, but I don't think we have time. So I have here, you'll see on my, there's a website there. You can go to that website and I have a video of me teaching you how to draw this rabbit there. So that way you can draw this rabbit um, that way then, because I'm going to have to go really fast right now because we're out of time, almost out of time. Okay, so ready? So here is your jade rabbit. We'll do it really quickly and then you can make a wish. All right, make your wish. Ready? One, two, three. All right. So, well, my wish was that I hope that you all had a really lovely time with me today because I had a great time with you. So thank you so much. I think, are we all out of time? Oh, we still have five minutes. Oh, I, mis I misunderstood. <laughs> Okay, so we have five minutes for questions. Okay, I thought we were like all done. <laughs> all right, so five minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask me? Okay, go ahead. Oh, that's a good question. What's my favorite book that I wrote? Well, okay. So I have a book called A Big Moon Cake for Little Star, and Little Star is very much based on my own daughter. She basically is Little Star. I took photos of her, I drew her. So if I ever say any other book is my favorite, she gets really mad at me, and she's like, how can you say Little Star is your favorite, I have Little Star. So for the record, A Big Moon Cake for Little Star is my favorite. However, I have a new book coming out in September, which is my close, second favorite, <laughs> called Chinese Menu, and it tells the history, myths, and legends behind your favorite Chinese food. Like if you've ever gone to a Chinese restaurant and you notice that the dumplings are in the shape of a person's ear, that's because an ancient Chinese doctor invented the dumpling as a way to cure people's frostbitten ears. He filled it with all these warming herbs, and he thought if people ate it, it would cure their frostbitten ears. It didn't really cure their ears, but people like the dumplings so much they kept eating it. <laughs> All right, another question. I think one more, is that? One, okay. Uh, wait, did you ask me a question already? No. Okay, good. Uh, what's your, uh, what was your daughter's name? Her question was, what was my daughter's name? My daughter's name is Hazel. <laughs> What was your question? What was your 
Okay, first question was, what's my favorite character in Where the Mountain Meets the Moon? Uh, so my favorite character in Where the Mountain Meets the Moon is probably a cross between Min Lee, because Min Lee is kind of, is, everyone's like, is Min Lee you? But she's kind of like who I wished I was when I was a kid, because she's very brave, she's very, uh, the one thing maybe we do have in common is that we're both very earnest, that's true, but she's very brave and quick, th quick thinking and all those things, so she's like the character I wished I was as a kid. But the other character that is really interesting to me that I keep meaning to someday do more of is the uh, goldfish man. I think he's very interesting to me, so I think that's my other favorite character. Like, I want to do something about him. And then uh, the other question was, what's my favorite pic picture page in my book? And I think, uh, I think we're just going to do this book because that'll be easiest to show you. I think my favorite picture of this book, well, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of my camels. I think I did a really good job of them. <laughs> but my favorite picture, that's the picture I'm most proud of, but my favorite is probably the birds because I love painting all the birds. <laughs> all right, okay, two minutes left, which means we have probably enough for another question. Go ahead. Oh, what's harder, writing or drawing the story? That is a very good question. And honestly, it's different for every book. And it's different because sometimes the writing comes easy and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes the drawing comes easy and sometimes it doesn't. It's really different for each book. A lot of people also ask me, what do I like better, writing or drawing? And I have to tell them, I don't really like either of them. <laughs> I just like telling stories. I love telling stories. And I loved, and if it's drawing that tells the story the best, I love to draw the story. If it's writing that tells the story best, I love to write the story. And if it's just talking to people to tell the story, I like that the best. So that's what I love best, is sharing and telling stories. All right, last question? Okay, last question, we'll do an, an adult. <laughs> Oh, sure, yes. I meant to do that more in that, in that thing, but I didn't. Uh, so my art process. Um, I still work um, pretty much traditionally. So I just use paper and pencil to do the drawing. And then um, I, I do scan the drawing into uh, the computer. And then I print out, a, because to make it larger, <laughs> to scale it larger. And then I paint, I print it out on watercolor paper, and then I paint that and I use gouache, which is a kind of thick, opaque watercolor, um, and then I just paint it. <laughs> so, so I I do use I use the computer very minimally, mainly just because I can't figure out how to do proportions to make it larger. <laughs> okay, and that is up. The time is up. Um, it was so lovely seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you.